I was born on the 15th of April 1980. I'm now 41 years old. I just made the cutoff of Gen X as far as I'm concerned. But what was life like, particularly here in Melbourne, through the 80s and 90s? Well, from old mate's point of view, I don't know, because I'm doing now what I used to do back then. Only I was a lot younger. With a view from sitting on the fence. This is old mate's non-tech channel. Hey, how are we? Sitting on the fence here at Old Mate's Non-Tech Channel for a Thursday morning. And the reason behind this video, I got a uh, comment from a viewer by the name of Dion yesterday who wanted to know about life here in Australia through the 80s and 90s. From my point of view, frankly. And I thought, well, that's not really a video I can do over on my main channel. I'll do it here at Old Mate's Non-Tech Channel. As I said at the top of the video, I was born on the 15th of April, 1980. I'm now 41 years old. Missed my 40th last year thanks to Victoria's horrific COVID handling. Well done to the dictator. Anyhow, through the 80s and 90s, well, effectively, the way I live my life now isn't too dissimilar to how I lived my life back then. The only difference is I can drive legally and I've got newer equipment. If only just. Look, I can't speak for the rest of the country, but I can definitely talk for Australia, uh, for Melbourne. Um, life in the 80s was good. You know, Melbourne was growing rapidly. Melbourne's music scene was fantastic. I was still a kid, but, you know, I was watching, um, my Australian viewers will know this, a TV show on a Saturday morning called Rage and Video Hits on Channel 10. Um... TV was fantastic back then. We didn't have all this reality bullshit we've got now. Uh, music was a big part of my life. You know, 80s music, uh, synth pop, pop, rock, and, early, you know, 80s disco stuff. I was playing around with AV equipment to begin with, cars as well. Um, you know, we obviously had here in Australia, you know, all the fads. We had the big hair and all this. Money was good. Jobs were good. The economy was growing. Um, everything was good in the 80s. In fact, I wouldn't mind going back to the 80s these days if I had the chance. Um, you know, we could be Aussie. We could say what we want, how we want, when we want, without fear of offending people. These days, obviously, with socialism about the place and cancel culture, it's a bit hard to do that. But back then, none of this was even thought of. You know... Aussies had a habit of calling a spade a spade back then, regardless of who it offended. Um, so, you know, it, it, it really didn't matter, right? Um, nowadays, though, it's a little bit more harder to do that, but through the 80s, it was boom time here in Australia, and Melbourne was flying. Um, the city was getting bigger. We had new suburbs being built. Um, I was initially born in Melbourne's Bayside suburbs and then moved to Melbourne's eastern suburbs. Um, you know, I spent, you know, especially when I was a kid, I had a couple of friends from primary school, but most of my weekends were spent playing around with electric motors and audiovisual gear and music. And towards the end of the 80s, I was seeing my first PC. Um, life was good. We were a fairly well-off family, so we, we always were able to do things or go anywhere we wanted to. Um, you know, we were an 80s... Most of Australia was an 80s country, you know. Big hair, big parties, big money, you know. The economy was booming. Um, relatively, relativistically speaking... And then around 1989 to 1991, the shit hit the fan and the ass fell out of the Australian economy. The then treasurer, Paul Keating, put the country into recession, lost control of the economy and ended up, you know, and, and this will live in on Australian history, but he came out in a news conference and said, this is the recession we had to have. The economy had flown off 
uh, towards the late 80s, we had banks going bust. Money was getting difficult. Interest rates were skyrocketing. And then the arse fell out of the economy. And through the early 90s, of Melbourne was in real trouble, um, both economically, politically. We started to see socialistic views coming in, creeping into the Victorian psyche, even though we're a con reasonably... Well, we were a conservative state. We're now a freaking socialistic, progressive state. My US view is Victoria is, you know, similar to California. Um, we then had Jeff Kennett come in politically, got control of both the lower and upper house of the Victorian parliament, sweeping changes across the board, infrastructure builds, and the 90s saw recovery. And then Australia's economy just took off. Um... John Howard came in, the Liberal Party came in, got control of both houses in Canberra, both the uh, upper and lower houses of Canberra, and the economy just walked and steamed off low interest rates, jobs. Everything was going hammer and tongs. Melbourne was flying 24-hour. We had a music scene, the envy of some other cities and states around the country. Um, technology took off rapidly here in Australia. Um, we we're a little slow to get online and get onto the internet. The US was already online well before we were, but all hell broke loose once the internet opened up and Australia just launched. We always had a reputation, though, of being a country that, you know, new technology will take it. Um... As far as old mate's concerned, I really didn't start getting into the culture scene until I was about 17 or 18 years old, and then there was nightclubs and pubs, and, you know, I was going to dance events, nightclubs, mainly because of the music that I'm into, which is no longer around today, um, which if you've seen what I've been working on with AV Fridays, you'll note that I am working on uh, topics. Um, but effectively, it is just... It is monumentally good. The 90s, you know, by the time I finished, you know, got to high school, you know, we were going out, nightclubbing, partying. Melbourne's music scene was spectacular, both from an electronic music point of view, but a rock point of view, and concerts and tours and all sorts of stuff. Um, unfortunately, though, this socialistic and socialism start has started creeping into Australia around then. You, know, you started having these minority groups starting to arc up a lot. Um, but the way I live today is not too dissimilar to the way I would have run my life in the 80s. I say things how I see it. I'm honest. I was brought up that way. My old man was, Jesus Christ, he was blunt. He was racist as well. Not as bad as, well, I'm nowhere near what he is. But my old man was anti-immigration. Something fierce. Um, a lot of the 80s was spent with old mate. You know, when I was a kid, I was mucking around with boom boxes and electric motors and AC stuff and, you know, blowing fuses in the house. The old man didn't care. The old lady hated it. I'd, the old man knew when I'd, been, I'd blown a fuse because half the house would have no power when he'd get home on a Saturday after going sailing. Um, but I used to do a lot of stuff like that. Um, you know, I had a couple of friends from primary school, you know, got close with them, spent a couple of weekends every month hanging out, often go down to Sandringham Yacht Club with the old man and go sailing and muck around on the yacht that we were on. Um, the economy in the eighties was starting to take off. Uh, but Melbourne's culture, Melbourne was, um, you know, there were a lot of people, you could say what you wanted to in Australia. You can't now. All these minority groups and cancel culture, this sort of shit wasn't spoken about. There was a lot of issues that we talk about today that weren't even heard of in the 80s. Like in my case, you know, mental health it just wasn't spoken about in the 80s. I don't know about the rest of the country, it definitely wasn't here in Australia, it certainly wasn't around Melbourne. 
you know, I was misdiagnosed anyway because I've got ADD, not ADHD. Because I've got ADD, it masked the depression and anxiety. So I was misdiagnosed. I've been suffering mental health problems since I was born, basically. Um, still battling it 41 years later. Um, so, you know, it was, it was a, the 80s in Australia, in Melbourne, was really good. You know, dinner parties were all the rage. Um, Melbourne's nightlife, Melbourne's cafe culture. I mean, Melbourne's the cafe capital of Australia. Our coffee culture in this city, and, and the same can be said down here where I live now. We love our coffee in this state, <laughs> you know. But, you know, it was all about, you know, 24-hour shopping kicking in and overnight stuff and pubs and clubs open and... It was massive. Um, when we got the recession in Australia, the ass fell out of the economy. The government got belted out of parliament. Um, and then when John Howard came to power in the mid nineties, federally speaking, and you had Jeff Kennett here in Victoria, who some of the stuff he did was really good. Some of it debatable. Um, although I am, and I've said this before, I do vote for the coalition but I'm a centrist. I'm not on either of the extreme wings of the Liberal Party. Um, the, the economy in Australia just took off. We had a massive boom time. 30 something years of consistent growth in Australia until COVID hit. Uh, but Australia's changed since then. And unfortunately, I think it's changed for the worst. Um, I'm certainly not one of these, you know, I was brought up through the 80s, both my parents, but I was brought up to say it how I see it. And I do today. Um, some people find the way I say things or whatever offensive. Um, I was brought up, if you've got an opinion, speak your mind. Um, these days you can't. I mean, here in Australia, particularly here in Victoria, it is very difficult to say what you want without having to offend anyone. And the other thing is also, through the 80s and 90s, we didn't have fucking political, politi political correctness. We didn't have to worry about any of that. These days you've got to watch what you say. It's ridiculous. Um, a lot of social engineering going on, particularly here in Victoria. Um, but look, Dion, to be honest, um, life was life was great in the eighties. I, I wouldn't mind going back to it. Well, actually, now what I should actually say is take everything I've got today, so my entire IT, all my pro audio stuff, all my home theater stuff, and take it back to the eighties. Um, Australia's music scene was booming. Jeez, we had some good music in the 80s. And not just here in Australia, globally. The music was fantastic back then, through the 80s and 90s. I mean, I've I spent most of my kid years in music, recording it, mucking around with it, all sorts of stuff. As most of my viewers over on my main channel know, I got into pro audio at the age of six at my primary school carols. I'm there in front of a freaking live mixer at the age of freaking six learning pro audio. I prefer to work in a recording studio, I'll be brutally honest, but my first foray into live professional audio, I was six years old. I already had the basics of home audio down by then. Um, you know, life, life was good in the 80s for old mate. You know, I... I had friends, I was doing stuff, I was, you know, blowing fuses and blowing up electric motors. And when I say blowing up electric motors, I'm not talking DC, I'm talking full-blown 240 volt. You know, because here in Australia, for my international viewers who may not be aware, Australia's household power is 240 volts, single phase. Um, well, 480 volts, three phase. Uh, and that's RMS, by the way. <laughs> 
Um, but effectively, yeah, the 80s and 90s was good. I mean, by the time I got into high school, that was a bit of a shock because I went to a prestigious Melbourne private school. Um, two of my Melbourne viewers will know where I'm talking about. Let's see how good they are. Corner Rickson Street and Barker's Road Q um, was where I went. And that was great. I, look, I had trouble there, obviously, you know, bullying and all that, just because of the type of person I am. And, you know, I was a bit geeky. I was into technology. I was, a, I was basically a sound engineer at my private school as well. That too was live audio. <laughs> the minute I got out of school, straight into a recording studio, um, which is what I've got now here, basically. Well, almost anyway. But look, um, the 80s in Australia were, was boom time. I mean, you know, I, I, I grew up watching Channel 9 Melbourne. I still watch Channel 9 Melbourne now. It's about the only TV station I watch. Uh, I was brought up watching National 9 News. I still do that now. 41 years I've been watching National 9 News. I know they call it 9 News Melbourne. I still call it National 9 News. Um, I used to... I still today, now, listen to 3AW. Through my teenage years, I'd be switching between 3AW and a radio station that never got a full-time license here in Melbourne called Hits FM. That's H-I-T-Z-F-M, Melbourne's original youth radio station, which was at 89.9 on the FM dial. Um, so, look, through the 80s, I, I loved growing up in the 80s. You know, all the stuff we had... Freaking side of the road. I was, I was doing side of the road special pickups back then. I'm still doing it today. Um, you know, and I was playing around with the old man's car at the age of two. He's starting his car. I'm two years old. I'm sitting in a freaking Holden Commodore SLE, which is now called, was called, became a Holden Calais. I'm sitting there at the age of two. I'm starting up a Holden Commodore SLE with a 4.2 litre or 253 cubic inch V8 in the front of it. Dad didn't care. Mum came out screaming fit. Why is he starting the car? Dad's like, just let him go. <laughs> uh, I was brought up in a Holden family. Dad was one-eyed Holden. So I followed down his footsteps. Bathurst was big for us. Um, cricket was also big. The old man liked his cricket. And so, you know, Channel 9... Right through summer, the cricket was on every day. Footy here in Vic Aussie rules, basically Australian Football League, or back then VFL. I was, you know, I still follow Essendon today. Uh, so sport was big. I played tennis. Sport, sport was massive for me. Um, I still today. I don't play it anymore. I can't play tennis because of my elbows. Both of them get tennis elbow pretty quickly. I get through the first two or three games of a six-game set, and that's it. I'm gone. Um, so sport was big for old mates. Sport in Australia was huge. And here in Victoria, sport was freaking everything. It still is today. I mean, if you're in the state of Victoria, you're a sports fan. Any sport. We love our sport in this state. You know, uh, footy, rugby, soccer, tennis, golf, cricket, netball, um, anything. Any sport you can play, Vicks will play it. You know, um... We're one for going driving. You know, us as a family would go, you know, on a Saturday afternoon or something, go for a spin for all day. You know, um, when I was growing up in our family, we were fairly well off. We weren't rich, but we were well off. Um, obviously, life didn't play out for me completely over the last 10 or 12 years. Well, I've sort of thrown a few curveballs at me over the over my last ten or twelve, at least since my late twenties, is probably what I'd say. Since my late twenties, things haven't gone the way I would like to have have them go, and now look at me. <laughs> so, Dion, life <coughs> life was good. Um, yeah, you know, like every other country, we had our problems. But generally speaking, life in the 80s was fantastic. You know, music was massive. Um, we were one for taking up new technologies. We got onto mobile phones here in Australia like a freaking bat out of hell. Um, so life was good. 
But like any country, there were areas that struggled. You know, Melbourne's homeless was pretty bad. It still is now. Um, I don't know about the rest of the country. I can't speak for the rest of the country because every state was different. We didn't have... We had state rivalry. But through the 80s and 90s, we were a country. Um, there was collaboration between the states. There's not that now. I mean, you've got us Victorians that have become progressive socialists. Fuck it. Um, you got New South Wales, which I don't think New South Wales has changed in the way they do things. In fact, I know they haven't. The biggest issue probably in Australia nowadays, if you're talking from... And I think you could say the same thing about the US. Like, I've got friends over in the US. I've got some friends in the UK, and I've got a mate up from... Northwestern Europe. Morning, Harold. But Australia used to follow in the footsteps of the US, and I think we should still be following in the footsteps of the US to a point. Anyway, the problem in Australia, one of the biggest issues we have in Australia, and I guess you could almost say the same thing in the US, is all our media in this country is essentially focused out of Sydney. Now, you can say the same thing in the US because a lot of the US big media is out of New York. So you can sort of make a bit of a comparison there. Unfortunately, though, here in Australia, the media, and I, I suppose the same thing could be said with the states as well, is that they try to kowtow to the politicians a lot. Um, but generally speaking, you know, I loved growing up in the 80s. You know, and, and and then when I got into, you know, my teen years, my later teen years, around, you know, well, 16, 17 and 18, because here in Australia you can hit the bottle legally at the age of 18, but I was drinking well before the age of 18. I was also smoking before the age of 18 too. Um, but effectively it was fantastic. I, I loved growing up in the 80s and 90s. I mean, through that recession years, yes, our family struggled, but so did every Australian family. The, the, the recession we had to have stuffed up a lot of people. But then once the economy took off, it was boom time here in the country. Absolute boom time. Um, and yeah, you had squabbles and all that type of stuff, but generally speaking, Australia was Aussie. I'm not sure you could say that these days. Um, Melbourne's culture has shifted, though. We've become more multicultural in this state than most other states. We are the... the out, we, we've got the biggest population of Greeks outside of Greece in Australia. There are more Greeks in Melbourne outside of Greece than any other state in the country. Um, same with the Italians, actually. So we've, we've definitely become a more multicultural state. Like we've got a lot of... The, unfortunately, though... For example, the Greeks, the Italians, the Lebanese, and some other migrant groups have all integrated themselves into the Australian, uh, into the Aussie ethos. Okay, some of, I, I, this might come across a bit racist, but some of the Asian communities are pocketized. They seem to just stay in their own little area. One part of Melbourne, or two parts of Melbourne, that are like that, and two of my viewers from my other channel will know the areas I'm talking about. Box Hill and uh, Abbotsford are very... They, they really haven't spread out and integrated their lifestyle with the Aussie way of living, whereas the Greeks and the Italians and the Lebanese and all that, yes, they have their own groups, but they get involved in Melbourne. Um, and Melbourne... Look, Melbourne has ballooned in size. The metropolitan area of Melbourne's massive these days. I reckon it's five or six times bigger than what it used to be. We've got a population, I don't know, five-something million people live in Metro Melbourne. There's 300,000 down where I live now in Victoria's biggest regional city or second biggest city in the state, to be honest. But it's huge. Um, there's six and a half million people in the state of Victoria. I suppose you could say 90% of them live in metropolitan Melbourne. Um, and Melbourne is just growing. Um, you know, but 
What I would say is I do miss the Australia of the 80s where we could say what we want. You can't say that now. Like even, I mean, I can say it here on my non-tech channel because my non-tech channel is just a channel that I can vent on. But over on my main channel, I've got to be very careful what I say because you can offend anyone anyhow these days. It's ridiculous. Um, you know, but like when the internet hit Australia, holy moly, I was in year 10. 1996, I got my first internet connection. 28.8K dial-up modem. <laughs> Remember those? Uh, the old Netcom mini dial-up serial modem was about that freaking big. Top to bottom, it was only about that wide and about that high. It was a thin thing, 28.8K. We are on an unlimited internet connection dial-up back then. Then I got a 56K modem, a diamond blue. They're a good modem. But look, Dion, to be honest, mate, life in the 80s was great. Life in the 90s, initially in the beginning of the 90s, very tough around the country. But by the mid-90s, Australia was booming. We went 30-something years without freaking of, of continuous economic growth. It's fallen in a fucking heap now. The arse has fallen out of it. Um... Melbourne's music culture was huge. Australia's music culture was big. A lot of it driven by Hey Hey It's Saturday and and um, the old Don Lane show as well. Uh, rage and video hits on TV. Um, so Australia's music scene was booming. And the biggest record label we had was Mushroom Records that the late Michael Gadinsky founded. Um... So from that point of view, it was phenomenal. I loved it. And yes, I wouldn't mind. There are times I wish we had not changed. And I think Australia's been ruined by marginal groups and political correctness and cancel culture. And I've got to be honest with you. I'm, I'm going to say this. I will never bow to cancel culture. And I cannot be politically correct. That's not the way I was brought up. I can tell you now, my, my old lady's got a mouth on her and so did the old man. If dad didn't like something, he'd fucking say it. And I do too. A dad would use more, more multiple four-letter word combinations than I do. Um, but, you know, the 80s was great in Australia. I loved growing up as a kid in the 80s. You know, from a AV point of view, everything was big. And look at me now. Everything I own is big. You know, car, IT equipment, AV equipment, pro audio, the whole, everything I have is huge. Because back in the 80s, everything in Australia from, you know, home audio and that, everything was massive. And everything I have today is very big. Big mixing console, big TVs. Um, I guess some of my friends would probably say I still live in the 80s and 90s today. You know, here we are in the 2020s and I'm still living in the 80s and 90s. I say it how I say it. I call a spade a spade. Um, I live like I'm in the 80s and 90s. I mean, thing, things back then were cheaper too here in Australia. Not so much now. And you'll probably say that for the rest of the world. Um, but I spent my childhood years, you know, I'd be around, a, I'd a, as I said, I had a couple of friends at school, but most of the time, if I wasn't at a round at a friend's place, I'd be mucking around with my sound systems or blowing fuses because I'd be playing around with electric motors at 245. I'm seven years old and I had a collection of like eight or nine 240 volt motors. At the age of five, I got my first electronics kit. The age of two, I got my first radio cassette deck. Um, I also got, I was doing, you know, I used to love going to white elephant stalls and 
car boot sales and fates and that. You know, if we were going up to my local primary school fate, mum and dad would be like, well, you go off first. Here's dad would give me back then a red note, 20 bucks. And I'd be loading stuff in the back of his car because I would have spurned about 15 or 20 bucks at, at the white elephant stall. AV, mechanical stuff, electrical stuff. I still do that now. So, can't do it the way I used to do it because I'm not living in my own house. You know, um, I don't know, how, well, the other half knows about this and a few other of my friends do, but back in, um, I think it was about 80, no, it must have been about 1990, 1991, I think, we got an electrician in, and this is when I was living in Mont Albert, north. Mum was getting fed up with me blowing fuses all the time and Dad was getting fed up with Mum laying into him about it. So we re we had a electrician rewire the house so that the shed and the garage and my bedroom were on a independent circuit. And that way, if I blew a fuse, I'm not talking about blowing a fuse up here, I'm talking about blowing a fuse in your fuse box. Uh, we knew which fuse had gone. It was a simple fix. But, you know... I mean, the, the old man, you know, being a well-off family, the old man could afford to buy me good PCs back then. And then, you know, through high school, I was a sound engineer. I was a um, computer person. Like my school friends had come to me for PC help. I was one of the first kids at my high school to go to a full-time laptop in year 10 because I can't write and I hate reading. Um, <laughs> I've said that before. So, look, Dion, life through the 80s and 90s in Australia was phenomenal. I just wish it was still that way now. Rather than these minority groups and academic groups and know-it-all experts were controlling the everything. Um, but I live my life these days the way I was brought up. Say it how you see it. Eat what you want when you want. And, you know, if you've got an opinion, say it. I do. It's interesting because I have, I have offended people over on my main channel. You know, um, and not just with an opinion. You know, I've done the same thing with operating systems. I've offended people over on the other channel. I don't care. Um, but, you know, that's just me in a nutshell. I'm blunt. I'm honest. Um, you know, I remember the first time I went to my first nightclub, I went to an underage event in Melbourne at a ball, then started drinking. <laughs> then when I started drinking, I had more fun. Um, Melbourne's nightlife in the nineties was huge, absolutely massive. It didn't matter where you went, nightclub, pub whatever it was massive then we got crown casino and melbourne's nightlife took off even further it's pole smashed now i mean the state's the laughing stock of the country um melbourne's yeah melbourne's nightlife was massive restaurants bars pubs clubs music everywhere you know pub bands touring bands djs international djs you name it you know, um, some of the nightclubs I went to, Metro, uh, Warehouse, 21st Century Dance Club in freaking Frankston. Hands up, my Melbourne viewers. You'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, pubs, restaurants, clubs. I mean, it was massive. Um, house parties, you know. My mates and I, we were having house parties. If we are not having house parties, we are out drinking. Um, which is why I don't drink these days. I sort of went too hard, too fast, too early. Um, we in Melbourne have become very much more multicultural. And, and to an extent, it's been good for, for Melbourne and Victoria, but it has had its major drawbacks. And today, we're not what we used to be. We are not. I mean... <laughs> 
in some cases we're the envy of the country in other cases we're the laughing stock of the country um, our COVID battle here in Victoria has been the worst we've got the worst death rate we've got the worst infectivity rate in the entire country and you know the fucking government's not defended that in any way shape or form to any other state but that's what happens when you live in a socialistic progressive state it fucks up you know, um, I do admit, like, through the 80s and 90s, the one thing that wasn't spoken about was Aboriginals. They are now, and I don't have a problem with that, actually. But there are a lot of topics through the 80s and 90s that were not spoken about that are spoken about today. Um, but, you know, there was no such thing as cancel culture, politically correct, all that type of shit. There was none of that. You know, we were Aussies. You know, the larrikin attitude in this country is not there as much as it used to be. You know, I am. I still call myself a, a traditional Australian. You know, I'm Ocker. Um, I am a bit of a yobbo. I'm not as much as I used to be. Um, but, you know, it. life in the 80s and 90s was far better than I think it is today to be honest with you, Dion. Because you look at it, you look at the way we are now and we're very... We've lost our Australianisms. A lot of our slang language is gone. Do you know, as an anecdote to that, here in Australia, one of the most common ways of saying something is, ca is busted is to call a cactus. You know, my fucking car's cactus, mate. It got written off. You can't say that now. I've been pinged over on the main channel for saying something is cactus. And I had to explain that that's an Australian slang term for broken. Um, you know, I don't think... I, I hate to say this. I would like to see Australia return to Australia our larrikinism, our attitude and everything. If we went back to being Aussie, I think we'd be better off. You can't do that now. That's the unfortunate thing. So, hopefully that gives you an idea, Dion. Um, as a kid, I played around with electric motors and AV equipment and through the late 80s, PCs, through the 90s, same thing. And I live my life the way I did back then. Because I'm an Aussie. And I'm certainly not going to bow down to the new way of living life, let me tell you. It'll fucking drive me batty. If I'm not already. There we go. That's it. There's a video here at Old Mates Non-Tech. Next time I've got something to rant about, I'll rant about it.